Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right, so you know we got to talk about rumors. <clears throat> it ain't just about everything I got going on in my personal life. We got to talk about the Lakers and the latest nonsensical rumors that could be sliding around your eardrums and in your cameras and your phones right now. What I see right now is the Trey Young rumor popping up randomly on September 1st. Mm, yeah, it's about time for a rumor. Basically, I'm telling y'all right now, I'm not trading LeBron James for Trey Young. Even though I know it's not the worst trade in the world, it's just not what I'm going to do if I'm a GM. Uh, Anthony Davis for Trey Young, again, same thing. It's a pretty solid trade when you consider the star power of Trey Young. My, my view on Trey Young is that he's basically a superstar. Um, Dan, I don't, I don't toy with his, his talent. I know what he can do. He's elite. He's elite. Uh, problem is, I don't like trading away little non-defensive guards for big guys, forwards. I don't like that. I don't want to do that. If I'm building my team, that's not something I'm ever going to do. You're never going to see that because I don't believe a little guy like that can win a championship without these big guys. Now, if you're going to bring Trey Young to us and we can keep those two dudes, then we got a championship caliber team, no doubt. So I'm not uh, overly against the acquisition of Trey Young so long as it doesn't cost me one of my three stars. You heard I said three, right? Austin Reeves. I ain't moving him. You see what he just did in, in, in the game this morning? I mean, he's adding things to his game, stealing the ball from people in different angles and stuff like that. He's just adding to his game. It's clear as the present is that this guy is going to be better than we thought he was going to be. And I thought he was going to be very good, but he looks like he's going to be an all-star level player. And so for me, I just, if anything, I'm, as a Laker fan, I just want us to kind of stand pat. Because once you bring a guy like Trey Young to the situation, what you're going to have to do is not only throw in the salary matches, but you're going to have to throw in sal um, trade uh, equity in, in uh, draft, draft equity. You're going to have to throw in some picks. And you're also likely going to have to throw in swaps. And you're also going to likely have to give up some players like Max Christie, Max Lewis, Jalen Hushafino, and stuff like that. I'm not willing to give away none of those players before I know who they are and what they can or cannot do. Um, unless I'm bringing back somebody that has equal enough upside and question marks as well. Uh, young players that, that we think could turn into something, but we're not sure. That's the only way I'm trading. I'm not trading Max Christie for anyone less than someone of his level. His age, his level, his upside. And I'm not interested in doing that because that's lateral to me. So for me, it's like I'm not just going to be giving the Hawks Jalen Hushafino and Max Christie and Max Lewis and, and then the salary for, of D'Angelo Russell and Rui Hachimura and probably Gabe Vincent or something like that to take back Trey Young. I'm not doing that. Now, is Trey Young worth that? I think so. As it pertains to his, his, his age and the upside of what he is versus what you expect Jalen to be, what you expect Max to be, what you expect those guys to be. I don't expect him to be a superstar. Max Christie has upside that could get to some crazy stuff, though. But I don't expect that he's going to be Trey Young. $270 million contract. I don't expect that. Uh, so when you get, bring in Trey Young, you're bringing in a franchise player. The problem is you already got two of them. So if you're going to build that way, it's going to be a lot of the stuff that makes us deep, a lot of the stuff that gives us the flexibility that we want that could potentially be going out in that trade. Plus, because Trey Young is not making up a fuss, he don't have no stuff attached to his name that isn't positive, there's no reason for his trade value not to be high. You definitely want Trey Young in a position um, to lead a team, to have the ability to attempt 23 shots if it comes to that. Uh, you want him to have the ball in his hands. On a LeBron James-led team, Trey Young is going to have to play a different game. He's going to have to play different. And because we never seen him in the pros play like that, I don't know that he thrives in that type of situation. So it's just a lot of stuff. Like A guy like D'Angelo Russell is likely more, to, more likely to want to play off the ball than a guy like Trey Young. Trey Young is better than D'Angelo, but you're talking about pieces that fit in your squad. And then when you talk about the defensive ability of a guy like Max Christie, you don't want to let go of Max Christie because he's one of your best defenders and he has the length to be switchable. And he's going to help guys like Austin Reeves. You know what I mean? You don't want to get rid of Rui Hachimura because you just signed him to a reasonable contract. And if he continues on the trajectory he's on, he's likely somebody you're going to want to keep on tab. So it's like to get Trey Young, we're likely going to have to give away all these little pieces to make us our team. And I'm not with that. <clears throat> I'm not with that at all. Unless you find a way to get back again. The same upside of the players we're letting go of, I want to get back. And Atlanta does have some pieces. But they ain't going to want to part with them. So that's really what it comes down to. If, if I'm going to do a deal with Atlanta and do something like that, they're going to be coming off of, of, of Usman Garuba, uh, Ty Ty Washington. Uh, they're going to be coming off of uh, Kobe. Kobe uh, what's the, the new Kobe guy that they just drafted? They're going to be coming off of uh, Johnson. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to trade any of those players. And I don't want to trade any of my young guys too. So that's how I feel about that. Uh, Trey Young is worth the price tag. 
most franchises should be interested in Trey Young, but I'm not looking to move my assets around with the flexibility that the Lakers have finally built. I'm not doing that just to bring in another superstar um, caliber player that is worth I mean, he's good, but I, he hasn't proven he can win a championship. It's not like we're bringing Kyrie Irving to the situation. We know he works well with Braun. We know what to expect. They can run their, some of their old stuff, their old sets, and just be cool. I'm not doing that. So for me, it's like, would I rather have Kyrie Irving or Trey Young? I think Trey Young's actually a, a higher level player than Kyrie at this point, based on the age and just the level he plays. He's, he plays at a higher level. But at the end of the day, I still rather have Kyrie because I know that Kyrie has already done it. He again, again, they've run stuff. They can run some of their old Cleveland stuff and beat the heck out of people. So that's how I'm looking at that. Um, if we're going to make a trade like that, I think Kyrie's probably cheaper, too. He's probably much cheaper. And so that's a lot, that's how I'm looking at it. Um, again, if we acquired Trey Young, I'm going to instantly see him as an asset worth keeping. You know, I don't want people to think that once that trade is made, now I'm mad and I want to trade Trey Young. No, now he's one of the most important pieces to our franchise. And it's going to cost you about seven picks to get rid, to, to take him off of us once we get him. You see what I'm saying? I value Trey Young properly, but I'm just not interested in parting with what I have to part with in order to bring him here. Because once I do that, I know my team ain't deep. And I know he's not going to supplement the stuff that I'm sending out. He's not. He's an offensive player. Ain't going to be no defense played like that. So you need your Max Christie's. You need your Rui Hachimura's. You need those guys who are going to play defense. Your Gabe Vincent's to help him. So if they go out and trade for him, you don't have that. So that's what it is for me, man. I'm not... I don't think nothing like this happens. Um, I think it's more likely it does happen because he has not demanded out. I will say that. I think trade demands uh, lock up the market. But um, I, I think the Lakers are kicking the can on trying to get higher level assets, which is always something you should do if you're a uh, team who uh, who is in L.A. You know what I mean? You should be looking to do something like that. I don't know if this is Atlanta trying to raise the price tag on their assets themselves. Maybe they started this rumor saying that the Lakers want Trey Young. Well, really, we're not overly interested. Uh, but they are interested in possibly moving him or maybe moving somebody else and they want to make the price tag high on them. That's always a possibility. Uh, but when I look at the Atlanta Hawks, they really could use uh, addition by subtraction for some of those guards. I'm not sure the Kobe guy, for whatever reason, I can't remember Buffkin, Buffkin's name. Uh, maybe he can turn out to be somebody who you want to have the ball in his hands as well. Based on what I saw, he don't really have too many weaknesses at all. Um, so could he get as good as Trey Young? I'm not sure he can't, to be honest with you. I'm not sure Kobe Bufkin ain't as good as Trey Young when it's all said and done. I don't know. But what I can say is the upside of a Kobe Bufkin, based on what I've seen, is, is somebody you want to have the ball in his hands. So you don't fit with Trey Young. What's up with Bogdanovich? Does his piece fit on the team now that you have so much more forwards to play? With Johnson, and everybody knows what Johnson can do at this point since they finally gave him some minutes last year, it stands to reason they should probably be moving stuff out the way for him to play. What about DeAndre Hunter? Do y'all still want that contract? That contract doesn't look that good to me anymore. So it's a lot of stuff there in Atlanta that I'm just looking at. I'm saying I don't really love what they have, but I do think that a lot of what they have is very valuable, so it shouldn't be hard to build something good. Um, and we talked about Atlanta more so last summer. Uh, we talked. We had a couple of videos where we broke down the Atlanta Hawks and how they were just ultimately a team that had a lot of a lot of good pieces, but they could use some 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 change there. Uh, the the Dejounte Murray trade. I thought was a bit on the risky side when you consider how many picks they gave up to get him. Uh, I think they gave up like four first rounders to get him. He's worth it, but not when you already have Trey Young in place on a max contract. And you know he's going to want his max money too, and he's a point guard. So it's like I didn't love the pairing of those two. I think they've handled it well, but uh, I don't mind trading one of them to keep the other one in a position to play more. And then again, they drafted Bufkin, so... Now you got three guys that could potentially be starting in that way. It's just they need to trade somebody. And so it sounds like maybe they're looking to trade Trey Young. And uh, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't really know how to feel about that if I'm the Atlanta Hawks. Because I didn't draft DeJounte. I drafted Trey. And Trey turned into a superstar on our team. And his best years are ahead of him. Anybody that thinks Trey Young's played his best basketball doesn't know basketball. So for me, it's like, ah. Uh, are y'all sure you want to give away a 24-year-old superstar? Or what? I think he's 24. 24-year-old superstar? You know what I'm saying? I, Nah. Nah. I just think the vision there is a little iffy. Iffy vision, I guess. Uh, sort of like I said about 
it was another team we were talking about had like an iffy vision. I don't remember who it was, but what they were at, what they wanted to do didn't even make any sense to me to begin with. Philly, when they brought James Harden to their situation, like why, why, why was that the piece? Um, so and the Clippers, why are they still, why is Kawhi and, and PG still there? Like move those guys, stop what? So Atlanta's just another one of those teams for me. Although they have uh, some really good assets that they could trade, man. They've drafted well. Um, and they haven't had a chance to really showcase everybody because they have them superstars in place eating up all the minutes. So that's not a team that needs superstars anymore. They're a team that needs to start developing what they already have and find out if some of that stuff can balloon. Can't balloon if you don't give it the minutes. And that's the problem. So they got they got a lot of problems over there just based on that alone. A.J. Griffin, is he ever going to get some minutes? I mean, he won two basketball games at the buzzer last year for the Hawks. Is he ever going to get some minutes? You got DeAndre Hunter ahead of him. You got Bogey to play some three. You got... You drafted probably somebody else, too. Uh, who did they draft? It was somebody I liked besides Kobe Bufkin that Atlanta also picked up, I believe, in the back of the first round or the second round. That's another nice player. Uh, I just I can't think of who it is, but they, they drafted well this year, too. So they're bringing themselves assets. They went and got those two guys from Atlanta that I already mentioned in Garuba and Ty Ty. At some point in time, you just got to say, all right, Atlanta, you got a lot of stuff that people should want, just like Charlotte. Just like New Orleans, there's a lot of teams that have a lot of stuff people want, but you have to be willing to part ways with it. You got to choose the right stuff to move on from and move on. Uh, so that's what I see there in Atlanta. They just they haven't quite been ready to make moves. Maybe this is the beginning of that. So yeah, that's my thought on the situation. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't have a whole lot to talk about in regards to basketball right now. My mind is not totally into the NBA uh, because it's the off season. There ain't nothing but rumors going on. Uh, but just like last night, I tried to throw y'all another NBA. Uh, video i figured i'd throw another one in there since the trey young rumors are coming uh fast i think at the end of the day if the lakers do make a trade for trey young what what the reality is for the lakers is championship or bust i don't know that we're in that space right now i don't know that we're in that because if you got Jalen hood shifino and all these young guys like as i said my expectations are not as high as most i think our team is talented enough to win if our core is healthy but the good thing is if your core happens to not be healthy this season's not a lost season because you have such young players to develop that that should be your goal any dang way. Max Christie, Max Lewis, um, Jalen Hood, Shafino, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, all these dudes are young, man. So for me, it's like, don't get it twisted. I want to win a championship this year. And also don't get it twisted. I want to see LeBron and, and AD healthy this year. But the fact of the matter is, if they go and get Trey Young, it puts significantly more pressure on those two to stay healthy. Not necessarily because they will have uh, less talent because obviously that's not the case. It'll just be more expectations for them to win right away. I don't think Braun minds that because he has those expectations anyway. AD probably doesn't mind that because he has those expectations anyway and maybe that's why the Lakers are thinking to do it. But for me as a fan, based on what it is we just came out of, I kind of like the idea of having young players that I don't know what can do and maybe one of them turn into something good. Maybe they all bust out and I wish I'd trade them for Trey Young. But, uh, you know, I, I just like the odds when you have more balloonable assets uh so that's kind of how i'm looking at that but at the end of the day if you bring in a trey young and then you turn around and try to trade him like i said it's gonna take seven picks buddy three swaps something like that i'm gonna need i'm gonna need assets if i'm gonna trade trey young from the lakers out somewhere else later on so that's that's why you do that um it gives you more of, of a of a bigger asset to get ridiculous amounts of future um for which these guys if they balloon into what they're supposed to may be able to do uh, so it's just a lot of stuff to look at. I just don't want to give up on Jalen Hushafino too early. I don't. Because I think he can develop into a really good defensive player who's likely not going to cost too much when it's time to pay him because he's not going to be that that great, great. You know what I mean? You bring in a great, great player, you better be ready to give him great, great money, and that's going to put a strain on your great, great cap. Believe that. But if you got a Jalen Hushafino, maybe he turns into a good star. You know, Dennis Schroeder in his prime back in OKC, six man of the year, something like that. You pay him $50 million and you still got a deep team. You can afford to re-up on Austin Reeves when it's time for him to make 160 or something like that. You got the money to re-up on Rui Atamori if for some reason you want to pay him next go-round. Um, and Anthony Davis isn't pushed around uh, at all by, by his $300 million contract or whatever it was. It's not going to be a strain on the team so long as we keep these affordable guys around us who come together to make a really good squad. So, yeah, that's where I'm at with that. I, I, I do respect the Lakers having a vision to bring another massive asset in for this particular reason because LeBron James is likely going to retire a Laker, which means you will not get that value for him. 
I don't know if they're going to have some new provisions in the, in the collective bargaining agreement that allows for players, for teams to benefit from superstar players retiring because it does benefit a great deal to trade them dudes before that happens. And it does hurt a lot when they go off into the sunset and you get nothing for them. So that's a real thing for the Lakers. You bring yourself Trey Young, at least you have another superstar in place when that happens to give you overall stronger uh, upside of your, your asset class. So that's really a real thing for me as well. And I see the fruit in that uh, from, from a Lakers uh, protection standpoint. Because if LeBron James takes all of that super billionaire value that we can get like six and seven picks for right now if we trade him and just happens to retire the way it looks like it's planned to, then you're hopeful that Jalen Hood, Shafino, and, and, and Max Christie and all those guys can balloon to their best so that you'll have a good asset class. Bringing in Trey Young takes away that problem. So I get it. Um, you know, D'Angelo Russell's not going to do that for you, unfortunately, that kind of thing. So we signed D'Angelo to trade him. His contract is going to get us half of Trey Young. So that's really what, it, what makes it cool for us. When you got somebody like that who's as talented as he is, making 20 mil a year, uh, that's an attractive contract. Now all you got to do is match up another salary that has an attractive contract like it, like Lee Rui, and you can get yourself a superstar for those two guys. So that keeps us from having to hear about trading Braun and AD for superstars. You ain't never got to worry about that. So it all makes sense. It all works out. Uh, I don't see no downside to bringing in Trey Young so long as you don't have to give up the stuff I don't want to give up. If they want to do something crazy like just take the salary match, then I'm sure the trade would already be done by now. Rui Hachimura, Gabe Vincent, and D'Angelo Russell for Trey Young straight up. If, if that'll get it done, it should already be done. But I know that's not going to get it done. And so that's what it really comes down to, man. Um, yeah. But if that's what the Hawks really want, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I don't like giving up Rui, but I'll do that. No question. I'm sure most teams would. So, yeah, they, it's just the stuff to, to, to really kick the can on at the beginning of the month. They know we still got a long month before the uh, before there's anything to really talk about. So they're just going to throw out a Trey Young rumor on the September 1st to get it started. I mean, they could have did this yesterday, the day before. No, they did it on the 1st, and that was that's what it is. So if you check all the publications, you're going to see Trey Young to Laker rumors, and that's just to get you started about something to talk about that ultimately will probably not take place. Certainly not today. So uh, I could be wrong. I've been wrong about a lot of things, but there's nothing that I've seen that makes me think this is something that's going to happen. I don't think so. Uh, but I can see Trey Young being a Laker someday because these are the things that show you that there's interest. So eventually it's going to happen. That's likely what that looks like to me. We've seen this movie many times. You know, you watch the NBA like I have for the last 30 years. You've seen all of this twice. At the end of the day, you start hearing about rumors of guys going to certain teams two, three, four, five years before they actually find themselves there. And Trey Young to the Lakers has been a rumor for about two years. I expect him to be a Laker within two years. Just being honest. So that's pretty much what I have to say about the whole situation there. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching. Oh.